jerking off, I imagine. I, and that's immoral. How is jerking off immoral? Do you have any sense of what morality is? I mean, I, can you well, get- If you did, did, then you would be able to answer me. Well, the rationality is I want to jerk off and then you jerk off. I think that's perfectly in line with the mechanisms, the faculties of reason given to me by God. I know you do. I know you do. And that's why I say your mind is darkened. Of course well, you do. What well, not that rational? You do. No, it's not rational. Give the it's rational irrational. argument for the, well, give the rational argument for the opposite. Why shouldn't I jerk okay. off? Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not porn is a net negative for society and we are starting right now. With Dr. Jones's opening th statement, thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Jones. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is an important topic. It's gotten submerged lately because of other issues, but uh, it's still out there. Uh, but in order to discuss it, I think we have to deal with it in an actual concrete form, which by which I mean the historical reality of it, as opposed to some type of platonic uh, notion of what it is uh, ideally. Uh, so to begin uh, that discussion, I'd like to talk about an incident that I've talked about before. Uh, in March of 2002, the Israeli uh, Defense Force invaded Ramallah, part of the intifada that was going on at that time, and uh, took over the city. Uh, which was normal, and then they did something that was a little bit out of the ordinary. They took over the TV stations, and after they took over the TV stations, they started broadcasting pornography. Now, uh, this uh, was the only way <clears throat> that the Palestinians had <clears throat> to have contact with the outside world. They could not go outside. Uh, there were snipers stationed on the hospital there. Uh, they would have been shot if they'd gone outside. And there, the only way they could get access is through television, and they were broadcasting pornography. Now, a lot of people were puzzled by this, and including a lot of the Palestinians. Why would they want to do this? Now, I'm saying that from the perspective of uh, America, the American empire, uh, there is only one explanation for pornography, and that is freedom. Uh, I can cite two examples uh, that were important in this regard. Uh, in uh, or the early 90s, when uh, Clinton was in the White House and where they were debating the the, uh, uh, the Communications Decency Act, Hollywood produced two films. One was called Boogie Nights. Uh, one was called The People versus Larry Flint. Both of them were pro-pornography uh, pieces of propaganda. And the gist of it came in the Larry Flint film, where he said, basically, unless I'm free to uh, promote pornography, no one's free. Now, this uh, is a, it's a standard uh, explanation, but then how does it apply to what happened in Ramallah? In order to apply it to Ramallah, we have to uh, think that the Israelis are trying to bring freedom to the Palestinians. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, you don't conquer people with an army to bring freedom to them. It's the exact opposite. They're trying to control them. They're trying to control the Palestinians, and pornography is a form of control, a sophisticated form of control. Now, how, where, how can we explain this? Well, we can't explain it from contemporary sources. We have to go back farther, uh, actually back to Gaza. Uh, uh, back to the Bible, there's an account in the Bible of Samson. Samson was the mightiest warrior that Israel had at that time. No one could defeat him in battle, but he had a weakness, and his weakness was lust. And so they sent their agent Delilah to seduce him, and Samson ended up eyeless in Gaza, grinding at the mill with slaves. That's John Milton's term for him. Eyeless in Gaza grinding at the mill the slaves because after she cut off uh, his hair, Delilah gouged out his eyes. Now, there is a profound truth in this image, a profound truth in this biblical story, uh, because as St. Thomas Aquinas would say about a thousand, over a thousand years later, lust makes you blind. Lust divides the will and it darkens the intellect, it makes you blind. And now I think we're starting to see some sense of why the Israelis 
broadcast pornography. They did it because a blind enemy is an enemy that's easily conquered. If the Palestinians could be focused on their passions as opposed to their oppression, they would be easily uh, ruled, uh, easily conquered and easily ruled. That's the principle here behind pornography. Nothing has changed since the time that uh, Samson and Delilah got involved in this type of thing. So as of 2019, you had an entire generation, uh, the generation of the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds that had been basically raised on pornography, and they realized that they were slaves. They realized it. They knew it. They knew there was something wrong, and so they organized something called NoFap November. Uh, which was basically a boycott of pornography and the activity that pornography was supposed to facilitate. They did this. They did this on their own. It was spontaneous. I didn't organize it, but I did have, I think, something to do with it because I had written a book uh, 25 years before that time uh, called "Libido Dominandi: uh, Sexual Liberation and Political Control." And I realized that with the internet now, I could get on and simply say sexual liberation is a form of political control, and people would understand what I'm talking about because they were living it. That was the experience that they had lived. They were living that experience right now. They knew they were slaves to their own passions. They knew that their whole generation had been, in a sense, sidelined by pornography and student loan debt and that they couldn't form their life. They couldn't start their lives. I mean, by starting your life, I mean starting your life as an adult, which meant getting married and having children. And so the protest broke out. The, it it got, uh, uh, got some publicity. And at this point, Rolling Stone got a hold of it, and they did an article on this, and they said that these people were basically anti-Semites, the, uh, uh, the ultimate insult the ultimate uh, uh, conversation stopper. That's where it stopped in 2019. It's been superseded uh, by other things like the COVID pandemic and all the other type of stuff, but it hasn't gone away and it's not gonna go away because it's being used to cripple this generation and the only way they're going to wake, uh, get break out of that bondage is by understand what happened to them. You bet. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones, for that opening statement. And want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here, Modern Day Debate is a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome, whether you be politically left, politically right, you name it. We're glad you're here. And with that, we're going to kick it over to Bosch for his opening statement as well. Thanks, Bosch. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Um, I was ready for a few approaches. Not that one, though. Uh... So a couple of pointers here. Whenever you're discussing whether or not something is harmful, you have to compare the harm done to the harm done through its absence. Uh, and a society without porn, if one were to somehow legislate that, would require a unprecedented degree of censorship on essentially every level of media production that would be incomparably harmful compared to any imaginable <laughs> downside of allowing for its existence now. Uh, but that's like the, the boring, rational, utilitarian argument. Uh, let's go over the fun things that you said. Uh, I think the IDF broadcasted porn because they considered it disrespectful to broadcast it to a bunch of Muslims. Uh, I think they could have broadcasted Britney Spears, and it probably would have also done basically the same thing. I don't really think it was about enslavement. I just think it was about something putting something obscene up there. I mean, they could have just, like, sworn a bunch in, you know... And, and, and that would have had, I think, the same effect. Um, and with regards to sexual liberation equals political control, uh, no. Essentially, every single sexual and gender minority in history uh, has found that sexual liberation equals the opposite of political control. After all, if that was really the case, you would see that all these repressive regimes that are homophobic or dislike lesbian people or trans people or whatever would allow them full expression of their sexual desires because then they would be able to control them through that. Obviously, that's not what happened. Homophobic societies repress homosexual tendencies, not the opposite. Transphobic societies repress trans uh, tendencies, not the opposite. The idea that being sexually liberated means you're more susceptible to control. I have to go on the offense here. How exactly? 
I, you can go online and see tits. I failed to see how this makes me more complacent with regards to state control. If anything, it seems like the people most averse to internet pornography are the ones most doggedly in favor of government authoritarianism, because there's definitely a pretty heavy overlap between authoritarianism and social conservatism. So I, I, I guess I don't know. You convince me as one of these 20 to 30 year olds whose life is ruled by porn. I mean, proselytize. How, why? What harm is done? If I were to uh, legislate, what 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 could you what could you say to me to convince me of the necessity of purging all media of i don't even know how you draw the line of what pornography is but you know we're talking about a huge undertaking here i, I mean i could ramble about how pornography is fun but yeah you know, we all know that that's kind of intuitively sensible uh you need to convince me though why uh, anecdotes about samson uh aren't uh going to do it I think people just do No Nut November because it's fun to see if you can. You know, that's not even a porn thing. No Nut November, even if porn didn't exist, would be rough. You know, it's not like people only started jerking off when porn happened. That's, that's you know, they were probably doing their Roman, you know, No Nut Novemberuses, uh, ye back in the day. Anyway, that's all I have to say. You got it. Thanks for that opening statement. And we're going to jump into open conversation. Want to let you know, folks, we're absolutely thrilled for the first ever modern day debate conference this weekend. Debate Con is going to be huge live and in person in Dallas, Texas. As an example of one of the debates, bottom right of your screen, actual justice warrior and destiny collide for the first time in person talking about COVID. So you don't want to miss that one. Links in the description and hit that subscribe button as a lot of those debates are going to be streamed live during the conference. But with that, thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is all yours for open conversation. Uh, so it's my job to convince you. Um, I, I probably can't do that. Uh, because your mind is so darkened by watching porn that you can't understand a rational argument. Ah. But but the point here is that I'm trying to that I'm trying to make is that I didn't have to convince other people. They they came to this awareness on their own. This was completely spontaneous, and there's no explanation for this given the conventional explanation of porno what pornography is and what it does. People, once once the pornography, once these images were liberated, people should have lived happily ever after. That should have been the end of the story. And it wasn't. And I don't see that you provided any explanation of why it happened. There's never an end to the story. I, I don't, there's never going to be an end. If, if, the, if the threshold for something being socially beneficial is that it solves all human problems, then that's going to cut out pretty much everything to have ever existed. I just want to know what porn is doing to people that they're not getting in real life. I mean, porn is just when you film people fucking. I mean, I've, I've been with people in real life. Like, what, what, what am I get? what online is happening that is corrupting my brain in a manner distinct to what I can do in real life. Well, the fact that you can't see a difference between porn and what happens in real life is a sign that you've become addicted to it. I'm asking probably. you, what difference is there? What 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 new thing am I being subjected what, to? One is one is real, and the other is an image. It's a flickering image on a screen that is a simulation of something real that, in a sense, violates the very nature of sexuality, which is private. Like it's movies. Intimate. I've seen movies before. Are we talking about pornography? Aren't Any we? all movies are flickering images on a screen. I don't. That's right. So that's right. What? Not all movies are pornographic movies, though. So, We're talking about pornographic movies. Well, what makes that different? You can watch movies, and because sometimes it's a portrayal they're naked. Of, it's a portrayal of sexual behavior. That's what makes it different. Sexual activity. What's the issue that with that? Makes it different. The issue. <laughs> What is the issue with that? Uh, well, you're the this, one whose the, brain is the, uncorrupted by pornography. You should be able to pose a rational argument here, right? I, I am posing a rational argument, and your darkened mind is not able to comprehend it. Why is your darkened mind the criterion of reality here? That, I don't get this. Enlighten I mean, I'm me. Willing to, I'm, I'm willing to say this is uh, not about me, but I get the sense you're saying it is about you. And that if I and if I can't convince you, uh, then the argument fails. That's I just want to know what the, what the difference That's, is. You have one movie in every, which every, everyone is wearing a shirt, and then you have another movie in which a lady isn't. What what's the 
categorical. I mean, back, you know, ye back in the day, humans were all walking around naked anyway, right? I mean, wh where does the harm come no. in? No, and people never walked around naked. Uh, Didn't Adam but, and Eve? But, but the, point, the point here is that there was a distinction which you uh, simply can't understand anymore because your mind is darkened. So to get, let's get historical here, okay? Instead of this kind of a priori wheel spinning, uh, there was a whole battle over obscenity throughout the, uh, the 20th century. It began basically as soon as Hollywood started making films, they started getting uh, testing boundaries, mm -hmm. breaking down the moral fiber, the boundaries that the people had established at that time as what decent people did. Why did Hollywood do that? Uh, because they wanted to make a quick buck, because it's much cheaper and easier to show naked women than it is to build the Colosseum in, in Rome and have uh, Ben-Hur's chariot race. I think they're different okay? markets, but I don't think Hollywood produces porn. I think that's a different market. You don't think Hollywood produces porn. Is that is that a normative statement or can I go on about the historical reality? Do you mean like okay. Hollywood like studios or just I mean, or do you I, mean yeah, nebulously I, like No, I mean like Hollywood studios. You're you obviously don't understand uh, the history of Hollywood. There was a pre-production era. You can look up the books. Uh, Sin and Soft Focus is a book you can look up. And it's basically about the pre-code Hollywood. This is Hollywood in the 1920s. You got people like uh, Mae West, uh, Diamond Lil. And obviously anyone who is as jaded as you are, having watched pornography, is not going to think that these images are transgressive. But the people What happens did, in those movies that's transgressive? Uh you could uh, show someone's ankle, you could have innuendo, you could have uh, nudity uh, like uh, Tarzan, the Tarzan film uh, with that German lady, I forget her name, but anyway, she's swimming naked in a pool. I just don't understand get, what the issue with that is. Like, I'm naked underneath my clothing. Unless you're hiding a secret from me, you are too. I just don't understand. What about the depiction of nudity on a screen suddenly robs us of moral character? The uh, you these these films were calculated to transgress social boundaries. They were calculated to do this. That's why they were created, and they created. I like that. Out, they, I I understand that, uh, but uh, and they created outrage among the public. The public was demanding that government get involved and and basically shut Hollywood down. OK, so there was a kind of compromise. They had a guy, the postmaster, Mr. Hayes. He came in. Uh, this was a battle between Protestants, Catholics and Jews. OK, the Protestant ruling class, the WASP elite ran the country. Uh, they were the, the guardians of the moral order. The Jews had just come from Eastern Europe. They had stolen this technology. They were using it to corrupt the morals of the people. And the people were outraged. Stolen what technology? The uh a film technology. How do they steal it? This is that's a a, a, a minor point. That's I think they the just point. I think they just used it. Wait, actually, that, hold on. That's no wait, wait a minute. You're you're, you're, you're you're diverting me from the story here. Well, which no, no, is no. That but I've been reminded of historical allegory. In this example, is Hollywood not Christ-like? Jesus Christ was transgressive in his time, was he not? And when he preached his word to his flock, he attracted from Rome, you know, the condemnation of the state. Uh, transgression was the mechanism through which he, um, you know, uh, 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 sacrificed himself to absolve humanity of sin. You're using the word transgressive in an equivocal fashion that simply does not apply. Jesus Christ did not transgress the sensibilities of the people of his time. He went out of his way not to transgress those sensibilities. He got crucified. I think he made a few that people his... angry. He did. He made the Jews angry and they crucified him. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Wait, hold on. The Jews were acting on behalf of Rome and Rome did not like Jesus Christ. You know those Colosseums you're fond of, they fed Christians to the lions, right? You guys were the transgressors back then. Uh, are we talking about pornography? We're so talking anyway, about back, transgression. So anyway, back, back to the 1920s, uh, Hayes tried to rein them in and he failed. OK, he failed to reign Hollywood and they continue to pr uh, produce this transgressive, these transgressive films. The people continue to be outraged. Uh, transgression is good, is it not? It's Christ-like. 
Uh, no. Uh, so they, the people were outraged. Wait, what do you mean no? What, what, what's wrong with transgression? Shouldn't we always work to push the boundaries of society forward? No. Why not? No. Christ did. No, that's not what you, I, I've already explained that. You're going, you're ignoring what I'm, what I said. Even Have you read you the Bible, sir? He was quite subversive in his time. Uh, so, I'm anyway, not diverting you. No, no discussion no. on Christ is the diversion. Everything in the world but Christ is the diversion. I'm just telling you, like he he made a lot of people angry. He was the king of the Jews, and for his word, he was persecuted by Rome, as were many Christians afterwards. So. I, I just don't understand, like, again, I need to know, like, I, what is I it about the naked body that's wrong to see on a screen? I've seen it in real life. It didn't hurt me. It was cool, actually. Yes, that's precisely what we're talking about, because people uh, wear clothing for a reason, okay? And here was uh, Hollywood uh, transgressing those behaviors, and everyone is outraged, and the what government reason? is not going to get involved. And so at this point, the Catholic Church got involved. OK, and the Catholic Church created an institution called the Legion of Decency. The Legion of Decency organized a boycott of Hollywood films uh, in Philadelphia. And uh, Warner Brothers ended up losing one hundred thousand dollars a week in the depths of the Depression at a time when they had gone into serious debt. Uh, because they had to get into talking pictures and they had to buy that technology. Well, the porn industry is clearly doing pretty well now, so obviously there's been a bit of a bounce back. I just don't understand, because you, you have to, know, unless you don't know at all, like, why is it wrong to have nudity on a screen? If you can see it in real life and it's fine in real life, what about seeing it on a screen makes it less fine? What is the categorical difference there? The categorical difference is that it's a film that is being produced for profit, uh, exploiting people's weaknesses. What about am amateur it, porn? It, it, like uh, just two people, like a boyfriend and a girlfriend. They're both 25. They just film something, put it out there for free. What about that? Yes, that's also transgressive. And it's, it's uh, a type of manipulation that uh, could only exist if it were tolerated uh, by by the authorities uh, who are running the internet. Who's being manipulated? Uh, all of the people uh, in this country are being manipulated by this use of pornography, whether they like it or not. How? It's whether they just, like it or not. It's just okay. there. You go online no, and you're like, I want to see people have sex. It, and then you type just there. into Google. It's not just there. It's uh -huh. not just there. There are people who actually imitate what they see. Uh, and that's sex. one one aspect uh, of this. So if if someone gets uh, fired up by pornography and he goes out and rapes someone, there's a victim because he was allowed to view images that are just will uh, influence his behavior. But rape rates all were these, higher all before of, all porn. Of these instances, all of these inst all of these instances influence behavior but one way or the other. Rape was the more common is, before. The question is pornography. The question, one second. Watch. The question is, what is what type of manipulation of human passion is the government going to allow? That is that is the big question, because nothing ever happens without government approval. And that's precisely the crisis that they reached in the 1930s. And the Catholic Church stepped in and basically made a deal with Hollywood. OK, uh, if, if you continue to do this. OK, we will then expand this boycott to every major city in the country, all of which have large Catholic I don't populations. I understand what this history and lesson will... has to do with the morality of the issue. You just keep talking about like the like I won. Porn is legal and it's everywhere. So like, let's talk about the morality. I don't know why we're talking about like in the 1930s, people were afraid of bare ankles. Also, rape was like way more common back like in the Middle Ages and stuff before pornography was prevalent. So it seems like if anything, it where, could be because you, of you're porn. Ma you're, or... make, you're making statements that have no basis in reality. Wait, do you okay, think rape is more common like now than what 1496 are the, what are the statistics, France? What are the statistics? This is ridiculous. The statistics of rape in the Middle Ages. 
they don't have any statistics about rape in the Middle Ages. Yeah, so this is a pre it's a preposterous claim. We also have ones from the early 20th century before pornography was widely accessible. I mean, it's really internet pornography that were mostly, because that's when, when it really like popped off, right? And you can actually see, if you just want to look at modern research, uh, rates of rape have generally gone down even as porn uh, consumption has skyrocketed. So I don't think there's yeah, an association. And, and, there. and, how, and how can I argue with modern research? How well, can I argue if the if the wait I'm, if the I'm evidence disagrees I'm with you, trying, you can't pretend it's the okay, opposite. Just to, just to be sure, there's not too much interrupting. Uh, we might have to go into the three minute segments that we've done in the past, just to be sure. Oh, it's it's do fun though. Here. Okay, okay, I'll I'll let him go for it then. At this ahead, point, Rosary, at this point, Hollywood agreed to something called the Production Code which banned nudity, uh, banned uh, ridicule of the clergy, uh, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The, the Catholics brought Hollywood under control. These, uh, the guy who was involved in this was named uh, Joe Breen. He said, uh, people like this, meaning the Jews in Hollywood, uh, should not have total control over what people see on, on the screens. Uh, and he was right. We have another, a similar situation now with the new technology of our era, namely the internet, which is being, it's a utility. Uh, these people didn't create it, but there are people who are simply banning anyone that they uh, disagree with because they own it. It's very similar to what was happening in Hollywood at this Who's time. Who's getting banned? Uh, many people are getting banned in, By on the internet. This is really sophomoric, you know? This, <laughs> wait, that's not sophomoric. This is that's really, a very this clear. Is, every, wait, hold every, on, wait, 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 hold, wait, wait, every, really quickly, because I've let you go. Being banned for being anti-Semitic has nothing to do with the porn industry, okay? Twitter has a TOS. That's not my fault. That's not the Jews' fault. That's your fault. Um, look, if we're talking about the morality of pornography, you've still, maybe it's your brain that's been darkened, and if you saw a few more pairs of tits, you would be able to understand and answer this damn question. How is it harmful to see nudity on a screen i i need to because this is literally like the topic of the discussion I, I need to know so you say that people can imitate behavior they see in porn so when i look at porn you you've got me i see people having sex and i have had sex so you've got me on that one i think people were doing that before porn um in terms of like violent sexual behavior like rape rates have gone down uh we have a chart up right now i mean you, you don't care because i imagine if the evidence disagrees with you it'll be from them but uh rape rates have not increased with porn so just where is the harm like wh like how like because you do need to convince me even on the no fap forums they're telling themselves stories about well, what how is, what is, is no fap for what what were they involved in what were these guys involved in when they're watching pornography jerking off i imagine and, and that's immoral how is jerking off immoral? Do you have any sense of what morality is? I mean, I, can you well, give, if you can, did, then you would be able to answer me. I will answer you. Okay, there's hu human sexuality is something that the human being has to regulate according to reason. Okay, he's okay. not like a salmon where uh, uh, electrical chemical reactions go off and he turns around and swims upstream. He has to sub subject human sexuality to reason. To rationality. What reason? Okay. Well the, well, the rationality is I want to jerk off, and then you jerk off. I think that's perfectly in line with the mechanisms, the faculties of reason given to me by God. I know you do. I know you do, and that's why I say your mind is darkened. Of course well, you do. Well, isn't that of rational? Of course you do. No, it's not rational. Give the it's rational, rational argument for the. Well, give the rational argument for the opposite. Why shouldn't I jerk okay. off? Okay. Okay. Because human sexuality has an end. Uh, you probably don't know this, but it actually leads to procreation, to the creation of other human beings. I can come and multiple so, times. It does, I, I'm not like done after one, like next week, if I'm with like a girl, I'll still be able to. It's, I'm not in any act, way impeding the process. No, you are impeding the process because you're acting in a way that is contrary to the rationality of the sexual act. Sexual oh. act is geared toward procreation the sexual act is geared toward interaction with the opposite sex toward procreation okay Why? if procre if procreation takes place 
if procreation takes place, a child comes out of that union, and that child needs to be taken care of. So uh -huh. this has to, the rationality of the sexual act, first of all, explains what its goal is, namely the unity of man and woman leading to procreation. Why is and that then the goal? The, and then, and then after What if I that, just want to jerk off? Like you keep saying want, things know, are it's things clear, it's clear because that they're not things. Not only is it you want to jerk off, but you, uh, it's clear. It's clear that that's you know, the way you see if sexuality. If you jerk off, you can come without making a baby. And babies are really expensive and time consuming. So like, I feel like the ratio that like you should like a hundred jerk offs to one baby. They, even that's, I think, too low. Um, but like, again, you keep saying like things are bad because they're bad. Why? What's wrong with what if you just want to spend your whole life jerking off? Like what? Like what? Then what if you, a person's like, will, this is what I want? You will frustrate the purpose of sexuality, and you're what doing purpose? what you're what you're doing is exactly the trap that your generation fell into. You, you know, you're humans all, weren't born with clothes on them. Just to, just to be sure that there's no interruption, what I'm going to do is I'm just to answer that question. We're going to give you two minutes to respond, to Dr. Jones, and then we'll come back to you, Vosh, for two minutes as well, and we're just going to yeah, flip look, up. We're really stop. we're really going to have to stop this constant interruption, and and. Uh, uh, and so uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, the, the end of sexuality is union with a member of the opposite sex leading to procreation. That's obvious from the act. That's oh. what the act is. That's what the act does. You can pervert that act, okay, but then you're not acting rationally and you're not going to end up with the, the end that the act has to achieve. Uh, if yeah, if we're following through, the purpose of hearing is to listen to people near you, so headphones are a corruption of that rational process. Your skin clothes you, so wearing clothes is a corruption no, of that. Well, hold on, Mr. Jones. Is a corruption of that natural process. I have no doubt at your ripe old age that you've benefited from some matter of medical technology, which is, again, a corruption of human's natural process. See, if we want to do this, if we want to go back to natural processes, I would be the young, strong hunter-gatherer, and you would be dead because you're twice my age. We both rely on deviations from human's natural role in the civilization. You don't even have to deviate. I'm pretty sure there are animals other than humans who masturbate. So I just need to know, like, why? You say, you always refer to some nebulous purpose. I'm not religious, you know, though I seem to have no. read the Bible more than you. What harm is done if you jerk off? If anything, it helps you because it lowers your risk of prostate cancer. And if you nut somebody later, you have fresh sperm. Uh, so, I, I mean, aren't you, it's like clearing the gutters, right? I mean, it's just, where is the harm? I need to know. Yes, I've said this at the very beginning. An entire generation has been sidelined by masturbation and pornography because they can't relate to the opposite sex and they are not getting married, they are not forming families, and they are not having children. There's the harm. And by the way, uh, ear sets help your hearing. They don't inhibit your hearing. Jerking off helps my dick and your prostate. That's medical science, by the way. People have been getting less prostate cancer lately because masturbation is getting more common, probably because of porn. So, if anything, we're saving lives, really. And in the process, uh, an entire generation simply is not forming families. They are not moving into the future. They're alive. They're living, they're living in their mother's basement, uh, uh, weighed down with uh, a vicious habit that people like you enable by promoting pornography. I think the problem with what you're describing right now is mostly economic alienation that could be addressed with Marxist economic theories. Uh, alienation from work, income inequality. Don't get me wrong, I agree that we have a problem with people uh, having a difficult time getting their start in life, but I think that has way more to do with a flatlining middle, uh, medium wage, or sorry, a median wage, uh, low unionization, difficult job opportunities, student debt. I don't think it has anything to do with masturbation. Don't get me wrong, there are people who have like an unhealthy fixation on porn, but that's the case with literally everything in existence, right? I mean, if you ban something because some people have a toxic relationship with it, you would ban effectively everything. I like, I yeah, basically everything. I mean, there's got to be, you know, um, people with unhealthy relationships. It's just about every modern commodity and service. Um, but we we can do better than that, right? Like, we don't have to essentialize these problems. If you want to fix the issues of people not going out there and making families or whatever, um, I just I don't think porn. If anything, like looking at porn is telling people how to do it, right? You know, no, goes in the right no, hole. it's telling you, no, it's telling you how not to do it. It leads to isolation, uh, and the other thing that I've already talked about in other uh, venues is 
uh, usury. It's debt. That's the other problem that is facing your generation. They are loaded down with student loan debt. That, uh, combined with addiction to pornography, has produced a absolutely toxic situation in which they cannot form families. And that is the harm that So results. we should address capitalism, right? I do address capitalism. Uh, I wrote a book called Barren Metal, A History of Capitalism as the Conflict Between Labor and Usury. But I thought we were talking about it pornography It always comes tonight. back to the Jews with you, doesn't it? Mate. Jews didn't invent capitalism, okay? Modern-day laissez-faire capitalism was a product of a number of post-enlightenment philosophies that developed during the turn of the 18th century. The like this is not it like it, listen, if your issues with Jews, you can just say Jews, all right? You don't have to go like like modern worker versus usury, like come on. Um interest rates interest rates right now are like a problem, but that's hardly the nature of the beast. You could, in fact, you could have like essentially. In, in fact, no. For the past twenty years, the um, we've had a historically low um, federal interest rates on, on loans, and it still hasn't fixed the problem. If anything, the problem's gotten worse over that time. Usury isn't the issue here. Income inequality is. So to fixate on the usury, I mean, you might you might as well be talking about like happy merchants around every street corner offering people five dollars if they sell their souls to them. I mean, you know, it's we're. we're Talking about a very uh, edge case, uh, dishonest framing of modern economic problems. If you want to have a debate about usury, I'd be happy to come on and debate that too. Uh, as I said, I wrote a book about the conflict between labor and usury. And it, usury has a big role to play in creating a whole generation that are unable to start families. But we're talking about the pornography aspect of it, which is also a very serious problem, which leads to isolation and an inability to form lasting, uh, fertile relationships with members of the opposite How sex. How does it affect fertility? You don't run out of sperm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like it keeps <laughs> this is this is i feel as if i'm giving you like uh, did you ever have sex ed as a kid i feel as if i'm now the fertility can only take place you can only have fertilize the egg if the sperm makes contact with f the uh -huh. female but okay if, if you the masturbate you can still do that the female you you can still do that it's not one or the other you can you can do both right one after another if you want to I mean, I'm young and strapping. I mean, Mas eventually that'll master go. But. Ma uh, uh, masturbation leads to isolation. The people who get engaged in this cannot relate effectively to members of the opposite sex. Why they not? can't. Because masturbation isolates you in a world How? of fantasy. What if you How? masturbate How? with another person? Like, like when you're in a room together? Uh, it's still masturbation. Well, if you're... If you're uh, okay... If you're masturbating with a chick, like, in the same room, you're probably going to have sex later, right? Like, I feel like that's a bonding experience. That probably makes it more likely you're going to have... Well, I, I, I'm not surprised that you feel that way. But uh, it, masturbation is still masturbation. It's not the same as sexual intercourse. Well, but you would do that later. You could masturbate, then have sex later. Okay, but we're still saying they're not the same thing. I'm you're, 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 you're backing up what I'm saying by saying they're not the same thing. They're not the same thing, but like this is like saying... Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of an, an analogy that highlights how dumb this is. I don't know if I can. It might be beyond me. Um, it may be. It yeah, may be. It might be. You're right. Um, you, so you can masturbate and then like an hour later have sex with somebody. Like there's, it. I don't think doing one of them prevents you from doing the other one. So you, but you do agree that there are two different things. Well, yeah, but I don't think okay. the first All hurts right, the latter. That's a great breakthrough that I can, we, we can agree on something like that. Okay. And I'm saying that they have completely different effects on the human psyche. The one leads to communion, the other leads to isolation. And how? the more you engage in masturbation. Now, how does this work? Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, do I, it, it goes. We, we've done experiments with rat brains, okay. And if you no, this is ridiculous. What do you mean? How does it work? It works bec because I didn't the actually human, say that. You, because you the human confirm. mind is because the human psyche is what it is. That's why it works that way. Okay. Wait, we, so wait. I, I don't have to come up with an explanation of how it works, whatever that means. I, I, it's an empirical fact that it does work. Where that can way. I find the empiricism of that fact? If you know, go I go back to, to NoFap November. Go back to NoFap November. I mean, data. That was empirical. That was empirical proof that people were unhappy 
with this whole regimen of pornography and but masturbation. I did no fab which November. Had, which, which had been imposed on them. But I did no fab November. I just did it to shoot big ropes at the end. I didn't do it because I have a moral opposition to masturbation. It's just a challenge. I, I don't think this, that this, this isn't about you. I, I know that comes well, as a shock. So yeah, this, but this, this doesn't this isn't about you. You cannot constantly reduce what I'm saying to your particular circumstances. You can't do it. Okay. And if you try, it, first of all, this is a kind of narcissism on your part that everything has to be about you. But secondly, uh, what what you're really saying is you can't understand what I'm saying. I understand that. So uh, I you're right. I, I'm not following. So it's it's 10 p.m. I have free time before I go to sleep. I have an hour of free time. I can either play online video games or I can masturbate. Is how is the latter option more isolating than the, than the former option? First of all, they are both isolating. Oh, well. They are both isolating, but masturbation to pornography is even more isolating than how just so? playing video games. How so? Why? Because it affects you in a way that internally, spiritually, morally that w in a way that video games don't how like what like how like you're just saying that like how in what it, way it, it uh do you, have you ever heard of guilt uh i've heard of the concept but you think it's a bogus concept it's a thing i think most higher animals are capable of experiencing so i don't think it's do you I think, think people uh, do you think people experience guilt after they masturbate Sometimes I think that guys sometimes do. Girls don't okay. often. I think. Okay. Then why? Well, then you explain to me why that happens. Uh, because after the endorphin rush of orgasm, there's usually a um, uh, there's usually a come down from that feeling. But that's also the case during sex, not just during masturbation. Like, like I've certainly so had times you, where having don't, sex. Why don't you feel sex? Why don't you feel guilt after you have normal sex? Let's say a man, a husband, and wife. Why don't they feel guilt? Well, it's I, the same, it's same, and same endorphin rush. Right? I just said they can, though, and also I've never felt guilt after don't. coming because I'm very but proud of myself. Wait, some do. The the feeling you're describing, the the post orgasm come down, that's just a product of an endorphin imbalance. You have a height of it during the orgasm, no, no, and then at, well, no, no, wait, this you, is liter. Wait, come on. Unless you've never come, like you know, I'm right on this. Um, after the orgasm, there's a come no, down from ignore, that period. You're ignoring what we just said. There is no guilt experienced uh, in normal sexual intercourse. No, I, it doesn't I, I'm exist. I'm sure some people do feel doesn't that exist. way. Doesn't exist. Well, you're sure, huh? Do you Are have you any sure, evidence huh? that it doesn't? I have evidence that no one uh, that no one who engages in normal sexual activity, uh, married people, they don't feel guilty when they do it. You have so you have that evidence. That's incredible. How do you have that evidence? Uh, because you have, like, I live like in this a world. Pew data. Well, oh wait, do I, you have like a study, or do you? Is it in your head? It's like I'll give you a chance to respond, Doctor Jones. But I do want to want to mention that we have got maybe about two minutes before we have to tr transition into the Q and A. Ah, do we get closing statements before Q and A? I'm open to changing it if you each want. I just want one minute. Yeah, I just want one minute. Dr. Uh, Jones, are you okay with that? Sure. You bet. So we'll one minute each. And uh, any, let's see, who we started. We started with Dr. Jones. Well, Bosch, you'll go first, and then we'll have Dr. Jones wrap up. Or no, no, no. It would be Dr. Jones going first, and then Bosch, because we usually alternate. So that one minute is all yours, Dr. Jones. Thank you. This is uh, this discussion uh, would invariably end up as soon as, in a position where, as soon as you make a point, uh, we move on to another another type of discussion. This the problem here is with the thing that we're discussing, uh, but even with that, uh, it, it's it's virtually impossible to talk to someone who is irrational, that, that, that is the problem. So if you're talking to, uh, about masturbation with someone who uh, is basically uh, bragging about how much he masturbates, you're talking to someone whose mind is darkened and can't understand rational arguments and covers over the fact by saying how and why as if there's some type of ultimate uh, infinite regress uh, that's uh, going to uh, ants, th th as if there's not some infinite regress that will simply uh, thwart any type of discussion. 
that's the main problem that I've discovered when you talk about something like uh, pornography. Time. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones, for that closing. And Vosh, one minute as well. The floor is all yours. I, I guess it's just reaffirming to see that these are the kinds of arguments that you get for a topic like this, you know. Uh, why is something bad? Because uh, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? You know why it's wrong. No, I don't. Why? Because you know it's wrong. Because it's, it's like, oh, uh, uh, porn can cause rape. Well, the data shows rape is far less common now than it used to be. Well, that's what the data shows. But, like, you know, it's like, it's you want the world to be the way you want to be. Like, the world is how you want it to be, Ruth Jones. You're locked in your mind. So, uh, like, I don't think anything's going to change your mind. I guess it's just funny to, like, chip away at the rock that's inside your skull. Um... It is pretty interesting, though. I have to imagine that, you know, um, tilting at windmills has left you very personally unhappy. I don't know if, like, not nutting means the cum is pulled up to your brain and it's just sort of souping up there, but uh, I would strongly suggest you reconsider your priors, because the direction you're taking right now is uh, not phenomenal, um, and, and, and it's, it's quite dumb. We're going to jump into Q&A, folks. want to let you know each of our guests are linked in the description. And for your questions, I've also got to give you a heads up. We have a short 40-minute Q&A. And so as of right now, if you send in a new question, I can't guarantee that we're going to read it. So just a heads up. We're going to try to move fast, but we may not get to all of them. The Crawdaddy029, thanks for your super chat, said, wanted to ask why the Bible was brought up during the opening statement in terms of this topic. I think uh, because, because it provides a paradigm that uh, transcends the 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 current uh, orthodoxy that establishes that or, or the claims that uh, uh, pornography is equivalent to freedom. It shows the exact opposite that uh, sexual liberation led to leads to uh, bondage. That's why I brought it up. Gotcha. And then some of these are statements as well, Vosh. This was Anomic Anomic who says, Vosh thinks that being a slave to your desire is freedom. This is your brain on porn. Yeah, I'll just say, if the existence of porn makes you a slave, then that's a symptom of your weakness and nothing else, you know? That, like, our world is full of all sorts of things that people use and abuse, and if you fall victim to them, I really think that says more about you, you know? Like, like you're basically, like, you're falling to, like, the roadside, like, licking spilled Mountain Dew, off of a off of a park bench and then you look up at me and you're like you want to keep this legal you want to be a slave and then you go back to looking up the mountain dew like it's on you man stop stop doing that this one coming in from brewmaster monk and want to let you know folks we definitely want quality questions so if it's just an insult at either speaker we're not going to read it we're looking for quality questions in the live chat brewmaster monk says Porn has never encouraged me to act virtuously and has severely damaged my ability to interact with women. It's a negative influence in our society. Wash? Uh, well, I would, in the words of the immortal Jones, I would say, don't make this all about yourself. Uh, if you have a negative relationship with pornography, then I think there are plenty of things you can do to make your life better. And I think that you should. Uh, it's entirely possible for pornography to have a negative influence on you. You should work to better your life. Um, but I don't think that's a good argument for, like, the wholesale abolition of the First Amendment. Um, I, I think you need a stronger one than that. This one coming in from Made by Jim Bob says, Porn is harmful because it chemically rewards the brain to interact with illusions. That's the difference. Bosh? The same with literally all forms of media. Books give you the same endorphin rewards when you sympathize with characters who have never existed outside the page. Movies will do the same thing. All of these things. People, usually moral conservatives, have long tried to fantasize about some imagined boundary that makes nudity in particular that special extra secret kind of media that hurts you. It's just not true. It, 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 that just, it is not supported by any available evidence, but I know evidence is what you're going for here. It's just not true, okay? If you see more naked bodies in person, you'll stop freaking out about them online as much. This one coming in, I think this is for you, Dr. Jones, and whether or not you actually endorse censorship, I don't know, so you can let us know, but they say porn and censorship of porn can both be bad, just like hate speech or cigarettes. Prohibition is bad, and the thing itself is also bad. Why can't both be true, Dr. Jones? Why can't both be true, namely that porn is bad and censorship is bad? I think that's exactly what they're saying, yes. So the more porn we have, the less censorship, right? Well, it turns out the exact opposite happened. As soon as we had porn, we had rampant censorship on every imaginable topic under the sun. So it led to the exact opposite outcome of what we expected, what we were told to expect. 
So uh, back to the First Amendment. It's got nothing to do with the First Amendment. Uh, obscenity was never covered by the First Amendment. It should not be covered by the First Amendment. If you allow obscenity, you will destroy the First Amendment. And that's precisely what we have seen with this proliferation of censorship on the Internet for things that should be allowed to be discussed. This one coming in from Asu. Asu says, what role does tyrannical family courts play in forcing poor fathers from loving kids or torn from loving kids by live fast judges play in making dad into a porn viewer? Let me read that again because it is a mouthful. They said, Thank what you. role does tyrannical family courts play in forcing poor fathers torn from loving kids by live fast judges <sighs> play in making the dad into a porn viewer. Uh, I think that one's for me. I, I, or I will both go, I guess. Uh, I'm assuming the person who typed that out has trouble dressing themselves in the morning, so this is just kind of generally to the audience. Um, right now, family courts don't actually seem to have a bias against fathers, which was the case historically. The main reason for that historical bias was because of the patriarchal notion that women are better at child rearing. Now, the reason more women get kids after divorces is actually because the men don't want them. There is a bias in the statistics, but it conforms to the bias in the relative parentage's uh, interests. So um, I, I think that right now uh, the, the family courts are not in a perfect place, but I don't know what that has to do with the porn thing. But yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's that biased against men right now. Dr. Jones, any thoughts? Yeah, both uh, the the uh, uh, feminism, uh, the bias in the courts, and pornography all have one thing in common. They all want to weaken the male. They want to get rid of the family structure that allows men to protect their own children. That's what that's about. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, Anomic. Anomic says, orgasm is the reward for successful mating. Can Bosch think of any reason why tricking his body into thinking he has mated Every time he looks at a picture of a per a person could have negative consequences. Eating meat used to be the reward for a successful hunt. And now this guy needs gets to drive his Walmart mobility scooter over to the freezer section and get, you know, more meat in one purchase than a hunter gatherer could have gotten in a month. Uh, it is a ridiculous argument. Uh, you know, reality has moved forward. Uh, you know, it's, it's the future, old man. Okay, sorry. Uh, if you want to argue that desensitization is an issue, sure. But again, that can happen with virtually anything. It's just not an issue specific to porn. I sincerely think the reason people re project their issues onto porn so much on the matter of desensitization is because, well, it's from people who ha don't have the best sex lives, to be honest with you. It's supplemental. Um, there are ways to deal with that, but lashing out against degeneracy is not going to help you. This one coming in, do appreciate it. Mark Reed says, Dr. Jones, you mentioned, quote, people running the internet, unquote. Since the net is distributed systems, who do you imagine these people to be that are running the internet? I was referring to uh, platforms like Google, uh, not specifically to the internet, but platforms like Google and Twitter and all these other platforms that basically are operating according to a system that allows uh, pornography, uh, but will not allow discussions of uh, alternative medicine for uh, COVID, st stuff like that. That is a perversion of the uh, 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 what should be a utility for the spread of information. And I'm saying that the uh, allowing pornography has allowed these people to make even more serious inroads into things that should not be uh, should not be censored. This one coming in from Sunflower says the answer to <clears throat> the disingenuous and bad faith question, quote, what makes porn and non-porn different is the same reason you have to be an adult to view porn. I think that's for you, Vosh. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, obviously have to be is kind of a nebulous point when the Internet is open to everyone. I know I wasn't 18 when I looked at porn. The reason why we don't allow um, young people to look at porn is because there were a lot of really complicated social physiological, ethical, everything specific to the act of sex that we think generally should be kept from children. And I think that's good and agreeable. The issue is that also applies to alcohol and alcohol has called, uh, caused far more death and destruction than pornography ever could. But for some reason, these abolitionist types never suddenly have an issue with alcohol. It's with pornography. 
Um, if if you want to talk about things that should be like kept to people eighteen or over, like I don't think that unique category suddenly makes it something that is um, uh, uniquely harmful. A categorical distinction for an adult has to be made. As an adult man, I'm nearly twenty eight now. You know, you're, you're looking at two things: a movie where people have their tits out and a movie where people don't. Nowadays, a lot of movies, people will be naked and it's not even porn. You know, the line's getting blurred a bit. Like, what is the issue? And I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. This is coming in from Research Er says, Dr. Jones, you had brought up the Jewish people in this debate, and will you disavow any sort of anti-Semitism? Uh, yes, I'm against anti-Semitism. Uh, the problem is that the term never gets defined uh, and it becomes uh, a used to shut down uh, all sorts of used, arguments, but in particular, it's used to shut down any criticism of Jewish behavior. Let's see. This one coming in from Mark Nannerman says, thoughts on St. Augustine's quote cited by St. Thomas in the Summa, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, say, quote, if you do away with harlots, the world will be convulsed with lust. I think that's for you, Dr. Jones, I'm guessing. Not yes, sure. yes. Uh, you, you, this is an argument uh, that leads to regulation of prostitution. Uh, we're really not talking about the same thing because we're not talking about the promotion of prostitution. We're talking about the limiting of prostitution. What you have with the Internet uh, pornography is the promotion of deviant sexual behavior. Which, which is different in this regard. Now, as to whether toleration is the best attitude toward prostitution, uh, you know, you can argue uh, both ways. Germany has a very lenient uh, attitude toward prostitution, and the result is that men get addicted to prostitutes. So I, I don't think that's the solution. I don't think that's the solution. Gavin Lockhart says, Bosch, rates of rape have not gone down. What study are you drawing from? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, chat linked it just a little bit earlier. I can find it again now. They absolutely have gone down. Um, so we do have primitive data going back a few centuries. They didn't have modern sociological analysis back then, but we did have ways of pulling together pieces of data from various disparate sources. We have similar things for murder rates. Uh, it, this should not be surprising to anyone watching, but rape was more common in the Middle Ages. That's I, I think I, I feel like that should be intuitively understandable. But in case to anyone it is not, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, and then it has decreased oh, true. significantly uh, since the um, since the 1990s as well. Uh, let me see if I can find that same. Oh yeah, here we go. So as pure the Bureau of Justice Statistics, I flashed this on screen earlier. I don't know. If people in modern day debate can see, but uh, even just looking since 1973, which was of course before internet porn, we've seen a five fold reduction in rapes per 1000 people uh, with 2.5 per 1000 back in 1973 to 0.5 out of 1000 in 2003, uh, by which point internet porn certainly existed. So yeah, I just don't think there's a correlation here. If anything, there might be an inverse correlation. There are countries, I think in like the post uh, Soviet Union that have, um, or, or you, you can see when internet porn becomes accessible, you know, uh, then rates of rape go down. Uh, there's a lot of really complicated potential psychological and sociological stuff there, but I don't think it makes rape happen more often. This one coming in from Ali Mario. I think this is meant to be a thought experiment. Dr. Jones, they say, if the purpose of sex is to procreate, does that mean rape should be fine based on your reasoning since it can lead to the result of the woman getting pregnant no the procreation takes place within marriage i've already said that uh, because uh, pregnancy can result and you have a duty if you uh, sire a child you have a duty to take care of that child and that's why it should take place within marriage so no it's we're not no r rape is not an example of what i'm talking about this one coming in from rum runner says Dr. Jones, you're against pornography, want your religious beliefs to be law, and are against usury. Do you realize that you have the same ideology as ISIS, and if not, what is the difference? I'm not against uh, pornography because of some type of religious belief. I'm against it because it's irrational. 
uh, because it leads to control. It leads to the destruction of the social order. And all of those things have been proven now empirically. We know what it leads to. Back in the 60s, when people were telling it, talking about it as something new, everyone had to uh, accept that as a ma an act of uh, a principle or, or an article of faith. Now it's empirically been shown that it is completely destructive to the social order. And so if, if ISIS uh, agrees with me, fine, that's great. Anyone who agrees with me, I'm happy to be agreed with. If only that empiricism could be demonstrated. This one coming in from Bezos. Every, wait, wait a minute. Just, just to bring that up, every time it does get demonstrated, uh, you simply reject it. So the guy comes in, he gives his uh, personal testimony. You dismiss that as not existent. Personal okay? testimony is not evidence of civilizational corruption. You need strong sociological data with regressive control analysis, which I brought to you with rape rates and you dismissed. So if anyone, the person ignoring reality here is you. I'll give you the last word, Dr. Jones, because the question was originally for you, and then you got to move to the next one. Did uh, is there another question for me? Oh, if you want to respond to Vash, but you don't have to if you don't want to. No, I'm not ignoring reality. You're ignoring reality. You're using these so-called studies as a way of denying the fact that these people are telling you what ha what happened to them and what happened to them in their lives. You're using that to deny reality. All of those people got together uh, uh, during uh, November. There was a widespread rejection of pornography and and uh, masturbation that went along with it. And you simply sweep that away. That, that didn't exist. You're saying it doesn't exist. You're the one who's denying reality. Every time you make a claim, you're denying reality. This one coming in from Bezos' anti-bullying agency says, I think this is for you, Vosh. I think it's meant to be a challenge uh, in terms of I don't know if it's true. They say, uh, funny enough, Israel uses porn as a weapon against their enemies. I'm not sure if this is supposed to, who this is for, actually. If you, each of you want to respond, you can. So um, the use of pornographic material in um, military and like uh, like national security purposes is something that has been used by a number of countries. Uh, it's most commonly tied, at least in recent history, to Islamophobia. Uh, because Muslims are perceived to be more socially conservative about pornography than uh, Israelis or Westerners, which is generally true if you're in the Middle East. Pornography is used as a way of sort of incurring humiliation. But the general trend of that behavior, which is, uh, you know, promoting things the enemy will find obscene to demoralize or upset them, is something that goes back literally thousands of years. You know, there were people in sieges uh, that were catapulting, you know, cow shit over um, palisades and castle walls. Uh, there have been, you know, people who made their standard coat of arms, the opposition's coat of arms with a tear through it or with like a peasant farting into a trumpet on top. Like the, the, the fundamental idea here is very, very old. Uh, it's only now with modern like speaker technology that using pornography, which has been recorded, is even technologically possible. So You got it. And Dr. Jones, unless you, uh, I think you're, you may actually agree on that, at least in terms of Israel using well, you did, you do, you do. So you do agree that it is used as a weapon. Okay, so that was my point. It is a weapon, and a weapon does not bring about freedom. A weapon is between enemies, not between friends. I can use anything as a weapon. And secondly, and secondly, and secondly, to talk about cow shit and pornography in the same breath is preposterous. It's preposterous. You're grasping at straws. Uh, you can use anything as a weapon. The purpose is to offend others. And because you have a lot in common with um, religious extremists in the Middle East, you and them both get offended by pornography. Now, this would be a very ineffective weapon against me. Uh, if I heard pornography blaring on a speaker, I would only think that I had uh, yanked out my headphones. I would not, uh, you know, rage at the obscenity of Western infidels. Um, but, you know, that's yet another way in which I'm more battle ready than you, my friend. Yeah, if you're... if. This one coming in from Ali Mario says, who was it that's introduced porn in Japan? And have you seen some of the stuff they make? It's far worse. So I think this is the alluding to the idea that people have purposely introduced porn, whether it be in the United States or elsewhere. I think this is for you, Dr. Jones. Yeah, the American occupation introduced pornography in Japan. The same thing they did to Germany. 
This was the regimen for a conquered country. I'm more familiar with the situation in Germany because I lived there and I studied it. But basically, as soon as the uh, Morgenthau plan uh, to starve the Germans to death was replaced by the Marshall plan, Germany was flooded with pornography. And there was a, a, an all-out battle uh, for uh, the entire uh, 1950s over uh, obscenity laws in Germany. Uh, so to, just to quickly clarify, so there are no historical inaccuracies, not only did Japan print uh, pornography for centuries before the West ever opened their gates, uh, they were so in demand in the West that Western aristocrats and uh, wealthy patrons would pay lots of money to get those prints. Um, you know, for, for our entertainment. And the Weimar Republic before World War II was actually considered a socially progressive haven, particularly Berlin, where they did indeed have a thriving porn industry, though, of course, a thriving porn industry back in the 1920s would have been like compared to today is like nothing, of course, because they didn't have Internet video. That's true. And the Weimar Republic led to Nazi Germany. Germans, Hitler rose to Which power. Was bad. But uh, basically by complaining about the decadence that had been spread throughout Germany during the 1920s. That was a reaction. And then they had the same react after Hitler was, Hitler was completely defeated. They had the same reaction. The German people reacted in exactly the same way when the United States started promoting pornography in, in conquered Germany. I think in retrospect, the Germans find the Nazi thing more regrettable than the pornography thing. Uh, yeah, I don't think Americans promoted pornography in Germany during the occupation after the war. It just happened because people like porn. Like, no, you don't no, have no. to Noth promote it. Nothing just, just happened. Nothing just happened in Germany after war. In order to have a magazine, a book, a TV show, a movie, you had to get a license. You had a license from an official of the American government. So nothing just happened in Germany. People printed, uh, uh, pornography illicitly all the time for a long time and what's more uh if american officials allow for the production of pornography in west germany that's not the same as them promoting it it's just the no, same it allowance first of all there is no evidence of what you just said and secondly it, it it is exactly the situation that nothing got printed in germany without the permission of the americans and if they allowed it it meant they promoted it why shouldn't they have allowed it <laughs> we are. Like Back I just just wait one. just to be clear the Back only reason one. the only reason the in, the the American government is relevant here at all is because their position on pornography is being contrasted with the Nazis in the Weimar Republic they did print pornography so what you're telling me right now is that you would have sided with the Nazis that you would have been in West Germany like a stodgy old fart you know with your arms crossed going you know well they may have killed six million Jews but. You know, at least the Nazis had the right idea about not letting people draw pictures of boobs on pieces of paper. Like, it, like the only reason the Americans introduced it is because the prior government was the Nazi government. I mean, it, they introduced so everything. You, so you admit that. they did introduce. So you admit that they did introduce. When I put it. up finger quotes when I said introduce, that meant that. So you do until you're challenged, and then you don't. No, finger quotes mean that I'm being sarcastic. No, 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 no. I don't no. think. I, no, you do if, until you challenge. If it was around in don't. the Weimar Republic, then they didn't introduce it. They just allowed it after the Nazis did, which Most before the Nazis, it was also allowed. Forward. I hate to do this, but just. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. A lot of questions. JPG says, besides from sexualizing everything, are we ignoring the studied effects of porn on the brainwash? It's worse than most drugs out there. I'm an ex addict. Uh, no. It, you're lying. If you think that the effects of porn on the brain are in any way chemically comparable to the use of t drug abuse, I, no, you're making that up. Um, porn addiction can correspond to, um, you know, a, a, a dopamine withdrawals and uh, overstimulation and resistance to uh, future stimuli, the same as interest in anything else haven't you seen a person burn themselves out playing video games haven't you seen a person like get really obsessively fixated with some movie fandom and then slowly lose interest with time but not know how to replace it with something else haven't you seen people fall out with a sport like this pattern of behavior is just a flaw in the human brain we're just weak you know the the chad move here is to overcome that weakness with self-control and discipline not by projecting your negative experiences onto the the thing that you had the bad relationship with 
This one coming in from All C says, since Vosh's Anglo brain only responds to previous data, I recommend you search, quote, your brain on porn, unquote. I think this is the same thing. I, I do find it funny that the idea that I am um, influenced by evidence is some kind of dig at me. I thought we were supposed to be preserving the light of Western civilization here, boys. You know, empiricism was an enlightenment thing. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm familiar with what you're looking at. Um, there's been a lot of research on quote-unquote porn addiction, and I'm saying quote-unquote there because, again, it really just seems to be the same as the kind of fixations people form on other things. There might be some additional socially cultivated downsides, probably stemming from the fact that when people watch porn and they have a negative relationship from it, they feel sad because they're not the ones actually, you know, fucking, as opposed to, like, getting addicted to movies or video games where they might not necessarily wish that they were the ones shooting Nazis in World War II, though I do. Uh... <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that it's the same, like, chemical addiction as, like, a, 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 a drug, you know? And, and then again, like, compared to the other downsides, like, just abolishing the First Amendment, taking down all pornography and media, how would you even enforce that? It, just, uh, an unimaginable out of data, like, all nudity, and you'd have to ban it in other things, too. It, it, you'd turn us into China. No, I reject it. I reject this Chinese bullshit. This one coming in from... Kwani Upstate says, Dr. Jones thinks that people need to be sexually thirsty to force them to interact like animals. Masturbation helps you, though, to get into meaningful, thoughtful relationships. That's all it says, Dr. Jones, if you'd like to respond. Yeah, that's preposterous. It's, 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 you're flying in the face of reality, uh, uh, as uh, Vosh does all the time here. <laughs> They're simply not talking about the reality of masturbation, which leads to isolation. It doesn't lead to communion with the opposite sex. The whole point of a successful life is making some type of connection with the opposite sex. Getting married, starting a family, having children. Uh, pornography and masturbation prevent that from happening. So therefore, it's bad. Wait, can, is, uh, I, can I ask one quick question of, uh, of Dr. Jones? If, 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 no. If you're, oh, I'm going to do it anyway. Let's, yeah, I do want to move on. We just, to be fair, <laughs> uh, Dr. Jones did say he wanted to do a lot of questions to get the audience involved. So I do want to yeah. jump. All Mr. right. Monster says, You've yeah, overridden me, James. That's what I uh, like about you. This one coming in from Mr. Mr. Monster says, Dr. Jones, but do you think it's healthy to repress natural feelings and thoughts if you're going to disown masturbation and pornography? You're not repressing natural feelings. You're repressing unnatural feelings and channeling them toward a goal that will lead to a happy outcome in life. I'm promoting the interaction between the sexes, which is precisely what masturbation and pornography inhibit. I don't know why that's so difficult to understand. The people in this generation have failed to start families. They failed to embark upon life for two main reasons. It's pornography and student loan debt. I'm proposing a way out of that, which does involve, by the way, uh, self-control. Yeah, I agree with that. This one coming in from Bezos Anti-Bullying Agency says, acting like porn desensitization doesn't exist is outright dangerous and harmful to young society Bosch. I'm terribly sorry. Could you repeat that question for me? You bet. They said acting like porn desensitization doesn't exist is outright dangerous and harmful to young society. I think I've acknowledged that it exists plenty of times, both in the Q&A and in the conversation beforehand. I just don't think that it's a uniquely harmful force outside of the desensitization that we experience with plenty of other things. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's it's the, the the problem at the end of the day is we're so obsessed with narratives. This is really the conservative desire to resolve um, any urge to feel responsible for your own personal failings. Have some self-control. OK, if you have a negative relationship with pornography, you know, st stand up, stop, like learn to stop consuming it. Work to better your own life. But instead, because you can't admit your personal weakness, you have to go in this gigantic tirade about how society is destroying you or the Jews are destroying the West. No, it's you. You're doing this. You're having it done to yourself, you know? And if there are issues, you know, and you can find them across the board, tons of different mediums, not just pornography, but if there are issues, that's your responsibility to take care of it. I've had uh, issues with, like, video game addiction, kind of, and I pulled back on that, you know? It's a process of will. Humans are fallible. It's just a matter of working towards self-betterment, a constant, unceasing process until you die. 
You, you'll never be free of it. And if they banned porn, you know goddamn well you'd be jerking off to every curvy piece of driftwood you saw at the beach, okay? So don't don't well, pretend like would. that would absolve Maybe you, you would. <laughs> okay, I, yeah, I would. If they banned porn, yeah, I would. I, I know. I yeah. figured that out. We'll move into the next one. This one coming from the Necrocrat says, uh, Dr. Jones, have you heard of Dr. Alden's theory on how porn is harmful? I have a feeling... Let's see, you maybe haven't, maybe an obscure researcher. This one coming in from Bezos' anti-bullying agency says, does Bosch at least concede free porn sites should have age restrictions to prevent young children from using their services? Well, you can't, the age restrictions are just you click the button saying you're 18 or over. I mean, that, I don't think that does anything. I think they all already have that. Um, but yeah, like, I don't think 12 year olds should be looking at porn. So I, like in concept, yes, if you're a parent, you should install like content blockers on your computer. I don't know how well those work. Like if your kid's super tech savvy, they could probably get around it or whatever. But yeah, I think, I think that's fine. Yeah. This one coming in from Camille Chow, Chowie says, ask why Dr. Jones accepted this debate topic and ask if Bosch will debate Nick Fuentes. So, uh, we'll give you Dr. Jones, if you want to go first on the topic. Uh, because I think it's an important issue, and apparently there are still uh, still people out there willing to defend it, uh, and they defend it. Uh, or it's an important issue because most people don't understand it. As I said before, most people see this as a, an idea of freedom, and it's not uh, to fail to see the control mechanisms that are behind these ideas, uh, 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 behind the illusion of freedom. So I think it's worth talking about. And then Bosch on whether or not you'll debate Nick Fuentes. It's been two years. I've just said email me. It's no, it's this is just it, it, listen. If it, it, the, the at the end of the day, like what you want is he calls in, he calls me like fat, and then I say virgin, and then we both hang up. Okay, it's really boring. All right, at this point, this isn't even about your positions, it's literally just about like s some inevitable chemical reaction you're looking for. This is like watching paint dry. It's been two years. Oh my god, holy shit, nothing has happened, nothing ever will happen. Now he's banned from everything, too. It's just boring now. Holy Christ. This one, coming, this one coming in. Sorry, folks. I, I got to warn you. Please don't send any more questions because with the limited time of q and I don't think we'll be able to get to them. I just want to let you know that up front. This one coming in from Do Appreciate Your Question. John Carter said masturbation is objectively more evil than rape. It violates the natural law, which is more grave than a violation of justice. Uh, let's see. I think that's intended for you, Bosch, if you want to respond. I just, it's, again, uh, like, how, why is it that the greatest defenders of Western civilization are the people most incapable of applying the philosophical precepts it gave to us? Like, do you guys think you can just say anything? Just like, well, well I think that spinach dip is the greatest evil since, uh, since cable television. What are you talking about? Say, like, it's not enough to just say words, you know? They have to be ordered in such a way as to convey information, and you have to back that information up. This one actually, actually, the uh, re the point here is it has to do with the sexual act, the logic of the sexual act, and rape is actual sexual intercourse, and so it would be less removed from nature than masturbation, which is not natural intercourse, and not but not as far removed as uh, sodomy, which is a, a violation of the the nature of the sexual act. I think you, that's where that guy's coming from. You know what else is a you know what else is a violation of the natural order? The concept of debate. Uh, Jones, do you want to just put him up sometime? We can go boxing. Uh, I can pulverize your skeleton. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what, what like, like, what was adherence to the national order? You know that, like, back in the good old days, we would just hit each other with rocks, right? And I guarantee you I can lift a bigger one than you. This, this deference, and it's always the weakest people who defer to it, by the way. The only reason that you weren't cast out from the tribe and left to be eaten by wolves for your degenerate anti-Semitism is because modern civilization coddles you like the infant that you are. The idea that you of all people would be relying on, on this, oh, well, rape is more, no, rape isn't more anything than anything, okay? Shut the fuck up. This one coming in from Jake. That, that's, that's your comment on debate. Got a bigger rock than you, Jones. This one coming in from Jay Grimes says, Dr. Jones, what does your view of sexual liberation mean for LGBT rights? Uh, there can, sexual liberation uh, is... Uh, sexual liberation 
means liberation from sex as it is intended to be, the natural order of sex, which is basically between a man and a woman. So all homosexual activity is a violation of the natural order. So why these people should have special rights because they're violating the natural order is something that I can't explain. This one coming in from thanks, Hake, for your support. Oh, the Hake report says click like everybody. Thanks for your support. And Silent Shout says, Vosh, if you are a Marxist, why are you defending oligarchs, student loans, debt, and women's sexual exploitation through pornography? What? Uh, first of all, uh, I only consume uh, furry pornography drawn by poor college students, so I don't know what you mean by oligarchs. Uh, exploitation of women, same point addressed. What are, you, what are you talking about? You realize that from a Marxist perspective, every single industry is exploitative, right? Like, a Marxist would be the worst person to talk about with this. Like, you know, because, like, what, what else? I eat food? Yeah, well, farming's exploitative. Like, we, yeah. That's the problem. We should address those problems. If you want to make it less exploitative for women in the broader porn industry, there are reforms that you can put forward. Because, and this is historically true, uh, illegalizing prostitution and pornography do not stop women from being abused in those industries. It makes things worse, actually. Uh, it, it, there are ways to solve these problems, but don't pretend that you care about women's rights. Like, come on. Oh yeah, you want to ban porn because you're so concerned with women's rights. Come on. You can try that lib shit with me. You really think anyone here is going to buy that? Like, that's what you're concerned with? This one from Giorgio says, Bosch said economics is the reason for current isolation. Dr. Jones has previously talked about Foucault changing leftist politics to sex instead of econ economics. Can he elaborate more on this? Yeah, this is the d default position. It's basically Voss's position, even though he doesn't really understand it. Uh, basically, the uh, the left uh, disintegrated uh, over uh, the period of the uh, late uh, 20th century. Uh, they realized that it was more important, uh, shifted from Marx's idea that if you control the means of production, that that will bring about the, the, the freedom that you want for the working class, to a realization that that was never going to happen, and then a shift away from uh, taking over the uh, the uh, economic production to the culture and then to sexuality. That's precisely the deal that Foucault did with the ruling class. Uh, he did it at, at Berkeley. He was a teacher at Berkeley. He had an epiphany. And basically what happened is that uh, he came up with shifting liberation away from economic liberation towards sexual liberation, allowed him to make a separate peace with the oligarchs. And that's precisely what happened over this period of time. It happened in the 70s in San Francisco. He was a teacher at Berkeley at the time. And basically you had the homosexuals in, uh, in uh, San Francisco converting to economic libertarianism. And that became pretty much the default setting for the United States after that. It's basically sexual liberation, uh, left-wing sexual liberation combined with right-wing control uh, of of the uh, oligarchic uh, oligarchs control of the economy. Radicos Eustace says Dr. Jones is right. Most incels have been porn obsessed, and also the more sexual partners you have, the less likely you have you have to maintain a stable marriage. Uh, actually, I've taken a look at that data. First of all, yeah, no shit, most incels have had problems with pornography. That's that's kind of tautological, don't you think? I mean, you're kind of selecting for the group there. It's like saying most people with porn problems have porn problems. I mean, yeah. Uh, in terms of fewer sexual partners leading to a decreased likelihood of marriage, actually, that data is largely untrue. Are you referring to the Black Pigeon Speaks video, I think it was? Um, there was a counter video to that. I don't know who did it, but the data on that was literally done by some amateur researcher who wanted to post hoc justify his perspectives. It wasn't uh, wasn't real research. The problem was that they were counting in the sexual partners had from people who were previously married, but then no longer were, meaning that you were it, it adding to the perceived, uh, you know, sexual immorality of people who had already experienced marriage. The data was just really wonky. I don't know if there's been any substantive data on that. Like, not really. There were also confounding variables to take into account. And don't, hey, and by the way, if there are any people watching Rolling the Rise at this, okay, do not make sociological claims if you're not ready to hold your standards to sociological standards, okay? So you would also need to do a regressive analysis while 
uh, taking into account a bunch of other factors. Younger people are more likely to have more sexual partners relative to their age because people are more sexually liberated now, and young people are also less likely to get married. You also have to correspond this to uh, different levels of marriage in rural versus urban areas because urban people tend to have more sex, but rural people tend to marry younger. There are tons of things to correlate to this. It's not just sexual partners. It's That's the reason why there's no strong research on this. It's very complicated. You got it. And thank you very much for this question. Coming in from, do appreciate it, Morgan Cody says, Bosh, can you quickly explain how porn is protected as free speech in particular? These so-called warriors seem to think freedom of speech is supposed to only protect speech they like. Oh, well, it's it, the the line for defining like pornography, first of all, would be really muddy, just like a video, like a movie in which a person is topless count. Earlier, Dr. Jones was talking about people showing their ankles. I mean, where does that line go? Uh, what about material in which people are fully clothed, but the clothing is wet? What about material in which people are fully clothed and the clothing is dry, but the clothing is tight? I mean, like the issue is there's no way to draw any meaningful line here, which means that if it were ever to like be affected, it would either be a meaningless and easy to work around piece of legislation or it would be like the complete and utter destruction it would basically just say we now have an anti-obscenity council and if they don't like something they get to like shoot you in the head you know and yeah it's just it's it's an utter violation of our first amendment rights here um which i value tremendously because they protect us in many ways not just in the right to see tits this one for dr jones they say islamic thanks very much uh xx WZWXX says Islamic countries have banned porn and they have the highest rates of porn consumption in the world. How does Dr. Jones explain this? Uh, because that's true. Uh, internet is very difficult to, to control. That's part of the problem. And if everyone else has access to internet pornography, it will be easy for people in those countries to have access to it. It's the, this is not something that some type of uh, individual uh, can solve on his own. You can solve the problem by simply avoiding pornography, okay? That will, that will solve that problem. It will loosen it. It will free your mind. It will allow you to interact with members of the opposite sex, and it will lead you to allow you to have a successful life. But the problem here is why should someone be given the right to constantly trip you up? Why should someone be given the right to constantly uh, pander to uh, your desires in a way? Because we all have this weakness. Everybody knows we have a weakness when it comes to human sexuality. Who gave these the right? Who gave these people the You're right projecting, to it? Man. To, who gave these people the right to exploit that weakness for financial gain? That's the main issue here. And our friend is avoiding that issue. This one from Laughing My Ass Off says, does Bosch not know what stance the Soviets held with regard to porn? They banned it. What the fuck do you think I have to do with the Soviets? They would have sent me straight to the gulags. You know what Lenin did to the anarchists after the revolution? They were the first people to go. Because we actually gave a shit about the dissolution of the state. What? what, what do you know what Stalin would have done? I don't care what Stalin would have done. I'd line him up right alongside um, other people I disagree with, if given the chance. As, and for point them out, that it say that I dislike them. Zero Kev asks, Bosh, porn is actually leading to people having less and less sex than in previous decades. I think you, early, you, you mentioned earlier that people are actually having more sex, so maybe you disagree with that. They say also, well, I'll let you first respond to that as a two-parter. People, I think, are having more sexual partners when they're young, relative to their age now than earlier, but people are having less sex right now than they used to. But how do we know that's because of pornography? Keep in mind, like 30 years ago, like during the Clinton administration or whatever, or like further back than that, young people would graduate high school with their mullet and their like, uh, you know, their peach fuzz and then go and work like, you know, at the local bowling alley and like make enough money to buy a house. I mean, the economic reality is incredibly different right now to what it used to be right now. Like, go view your average college student. OK, they're not disinterested in fucking i promise you okay what they are is stressed out and they're stressed out because life is expensive they don't have the time or the money to do the things they want and hanging out with people costs money too you know i mean you can go to a park but most people go out for food or whatever and that can be like a day's work life is hard right now i don't think it's because of porn I, you know, I don't think the research shows that. And just, this is my anecdotal experience, but looking at porn has never made me want to fuck people less. It's made me want to fuck people more. Whenever I lo looked at porn, my thought was like, oh, that's cool, yeah, I should, like, go on Tinder, you know? Like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, 
my experience with it has not been like, you know, oh, now I don't need to. But the, but the stress of college did like mess me up back when I was in my early 20s. So I think that's the bigger cause, personally. This is from Zero Kev also. This is a two-parter. They said, Bosh, don't you think it encourages thought patterns that degrade women? Um, mainstream recorded pornography is pretty degrading to women. But people were pretty degrading to women before the pornography. So I think that's more a reflection of people's tastes than it is of the porn industry making people misogynistic. I think the issue here is like, you know, those tastes existed and have existed for a long time. And that needs to be worked on. But they would be there without the porn. This is from Just Call Me Oscar says, Dr. Jones, would you prefer to forbid porn at the federal level or reverse the 14th Amendment and allow the states to decide? Uh, if you make me king of the United States, I will, ma I will make that decision. No, I think that the, the laws should be uh, – there are obscenity laws already on the books. They should be enforced. They will be enforced at a local level. That's – I think what we're seeing in the United States is a reversion to local – uh, autonomy, uh, local uh, hegemony over local culture. I think abortion is an example of this. Uh, I think it's going to be returned to the states. I think abortion is similar to what we're talking about here with pornography and the worldview that our, our friend here is espousing. It's the Hollywood worldview. It's the Hollywood privileged worldview where basically uh, they want to rule the entire world according to their twisted standards. That uh, basically was enforced by the Supreme Court, uh, and now we're seeing the Supreme Court is backing away from that, and we're going to see the rise of regional culture, and it'll ban abortion, and I think it's also going to ban pornography as well. Gotcha. And this one from Daily Veracity says, Bosch, rape has absolutely gone up over the past 60 years. In 1950, it was approximately eight per 100,000, and today it's 29 per 100,000, a threefold increase. You're starting from the decade of recorded crime, or record crime, they say, you're starting from the decade of record crime, the 90s, which is disingenuous. I started from the 70s, which were not a decade of record crime. Um, no, I guess that'd have to depend on your chart. I mean, was, I was pulling that from a government source. There are probably some statistical uh, sources that might have contrary numbers, but I gotta wonder how much they're how much they're factoring in other confounding variables, like the reporting rate. So, I'd be willing to bet that reported rapes have gone up massively over the past century. But I don't think that's because rape has gotten more common. I think that's because in 1926, if a dame walked to the local station and said she'd been raped, the cops would beat her to death and then fine her husband. Uh, I, I feel like there are other factors at play there. Nine out of a hundred thousand from a century ago sounds like comically low to me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there, there are probably different sources than this, but I, I trust. I think it's gone down. Yeah. This one... One man's chorus says, Bosch, the difference between sex in private and porn is that porn is meant for public consumption. It's an example for other people to follow. Showing sex is a non-moral context encourages people to treat it that way. I don't know what you mean by moral context. Sex is- We know is, that. We know that. I know, but you don't either because you failed utterly to explain it. And Christ is frowning on you from his cloud. Uh, look, sex is a mechanical act, okay? It's a physical thing that you can do, much like playing tennis. Uh, you know, some people are good at it, some people are bad at it. You can play solo against a wall, or you can do it, you know, with someone else, which I guess is more fun than playing tennis against a wall. Um, but th this, this, what's this context of moral act? If you look at tits online, like, I don't understand what moral... When I think of ethics, I think of, like, the system by which you assess whether something is harmful or not harmful. And I we just utterly failed to demonstrate the issue here, you know? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Who's harmed? We Every time we demonstrate it, you ignore it. Go ahead. Next question. This one coming in from Kansas Zoomer says, The stats Vosh is referring to for the Middle Ages rape included arranged marriages... This is pretty disingenuous. Does Vosh read his own sources? I haven't provided any sources on the Middle Ages, so I don't know. First of all, I think you could argue that arranged marriages are 
in many cases rape, but rape. But I actually didn't name any sources, so I don't know. I don't know if they just heard me say it and they were just like ready to go. But I'm also against uh, arranged marriages, for what it's worth. Um, and also, counting a whole arranged marriage as one rape actually feels like understating the issue a bit, you know? Maybe every once in a while you get an arranged marriage where things are all hunky-dory, but I have a feeling that a lot of those led to many rapes. So, again, reporting wasn't even a thing back then, but we have kind of like a... Historians have a way of, of pulling, like, very rough data from those times. Um, yeah, murder was also much higher. Murder used to be so common. It's so, so, so rare today back in the day everyone knew a dude who'd like been murdered like that was like just a thing like you're going down the road and like oh bandits whack and you just that's a guy who's been murdered nowadays that is not the case gotcha and last question this is an interesting one rh says question for both and by the way we're a few minutes over so thanks <laughs> both dr jones and bosch we're kind of going a little bit beyond what we promised, but there have just been so many questions. And also, this is an intriguing one. They say, question for both, what percent of female porn stars are there by choice compared to those that are act there not by choice? This, this ignores the issue of whether you can engineer consent. The whole point of social That's engineering true. as it was practiced after World War II in the United States was to engineer consent. You can create an atmosphere in which people will act against their own best interest. Uh, that's that's simply a fact of life, and I, that, that's what happens with pornography. You have widespread acceptance of behavior that is against the best interests of the people who engage in it. You got it. And I want to say, folks, thanks so oh, much for spending time. Oh, I think that was for both of us. I just want to jump in. Yeah, uh, go for it. I just think uh, it is a problem, but it is a problem that has gotten better. The more light there is, the more destigmatization there is on the porn and sex industry, the less abuse there will be. That's the case for basically every industry. We saw this during prohibition and alcohol production and consumption. The more destigmatized, accepted, regulated something is, the more legal it is, the less abuse there will be because everything's above board, everything's in the books, and it's easier for people who are abused to turn to the police without fearing for their own profession or their, well, their freedom. You got it. Thank you very much. And want to say, folks, we really do appreciate our guests. And sorry, we did not get to all of the questions. However, if you want to hear more or read more from our guests, they are linked in the description. I'm going to be back with a post credit scene in just a moment, letting you know about upcoming debates as we have many juicy debates like this one coming up. But we want to say, most of all, thanks so much. It has been a true pleasure. Bosch and Dr. Jones, we appreciate you spending time with us tonight. It's been my pleasure. Nice to see you again, James. You as well. Thank you. With that, I'll be back in just a moment, fact, but just a moment, folks. Thanks so much and stick around. Can we read his ADL report? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I looked at this when I accepted the debate. I thought it'd be fun. E. Michael Jones is an anti-Semitic Catholic writer who promotes the views that Jews are dedicated to propaga propagating and perpetuating attacks on the Catholic Church, moral standards, social stability, and political order throughout the world. Uh, characterizing 21st century civilization as a Jewish world run on commercial principles, identifies this Jewish modernity as representing blood, the law, calculation, and hate. Uh, it, like, you can summarize it. Like, Jews did everything wrong with the world. Uh, the Holocaust didn't happen, but if it did, it was a good thing. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's like a whole thing, you know. Um, anyway, I thought it would be interesting because um, normally when we debate Nazis, they're like 16-year-old Nazis. You know what I mean? Like Zoomers. Who are just like, yeah, dude, wait, 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 pray, creeper, 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 you know, um, and virgins. But this time, this guy was like 85, an OG Nazi, and still probably a virgin. Yeah, also, for some reason, his book is in hardcover for $400, and it has nothing but five-star ratings. Uh, for, for reasons that probably make a lot of sense if you think about which types of people would seek out his literature. Um, oh yeah, his, his Insta page that Vermin looked, or linked, sorry. Be sure to tell the homosexuals to wear their COVID masks while engaging in anal sex. Someone might cough and spread a disease. And the first response is retarded homos, which... True. We got the book. Social Engineering and the Civil Rights Movement. This has got to be about how MLK was like a Jewish op or whatever, right?
Yeah, I, I mean, we, we get the gist. We get the gist. I, yeah, we, we, we get the gist, you know. I, it is kind of an honor. I, I, I actually like talking to that guy um, because he's kind of like a picture into the future for all the, like, 16-year-old Nazis right now. You know what I mean? Like, like, hey, you know, it's fun when you're zooming and you don't have a job or whatever, but, like, you're going to turn into, like, a hateful fucking crypt keeper. It's, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, that was pretty fun. Normally, after these debates, I talk about the arguments, but do we really need to? Like, come on. I, th I, th I think we get it. Uh, I think I think we get it. I, I think we understand. That was fun, though, you know, uh, just, just abusing people.